Hey booktube, I'm back again with my second video. I am hoping to get in a little bit of Irish Readathon action. Um, so let's get going. So with the Irish Readathon, um, you may know, probably do, that three Irish booktubers are hosting a readathon where everyone is encouraged to read at least one Irish writer in the month. Um, they also have some prompts. I am sort of more or less freestyling it. Um, so the Irish writers who, the Irish booktubers who are hosting the readathon are over at Fred Weasley, Died Laughing, Elaine Howlin, and Leanne Rose, and I will put links to their channels below. So I hope to have like, I guess, three sections to the video. Um, first, my Irish readathon TBR, very modest and provisional as it is. Some recommendations of Irish authored books that I've read in recent years. And a few links I think are worth checking out that might turn you on to new Irish writers or provide you with something shorter to read if you don't have time to fit in a whole book, but maybe you can find a writer that you can um, read in a future month. So first to my very basic Irish readathon TBR. I'm definitely going to be able to fit in the audiobook for Edna O'Brien's memoir, Country Girl. Uh, it's available on Scribd and it'll be something I'll have time to read in the last week of the month for sure, or listen to. Um, if you're unfamiliar with her, Edna O'Brien is basically a grand dame of Irish letters. She literally is a dame. Um, I think she's now about in her late 80s, 88 perhaps. Um, she has a very long career behind her. But she just published a new novel in 2015, so um, who knows, maybe she has something else coming out. Um, so she's known for having pushed boundaries about what was acceptable in Irish literature, especially in terms of women's sexuality. Um, her first book was a novel called The Country Girls. Um, came out in 1960. Um, it was burned by the priest in her childhood parish church in rural County Clare. It was banned and she left Ireland and since then she's lived most of the time in London. So her, her uh, memoir obviously is sort of like, uh, you know, now back to the real life version of The Country Girls, which was largely autobiographical. And The Country Girls was the first in the trilogy. So I have read The Country Girls a few years ago and quite enjoyed it, um, but I need to read the other two in the trilogy. So her novels have often centered on women's lives, pretty much, um, and the claustrophobia of options that were open to women, writing about gender roles, women's sexuality, emotional labor. She's also written poetry, plays, and short stories besides the novels. So I'm looking forward to checking out her memoir, and um, definitely I'll have time to fit that in. Her memoir came out in 2012, um, so I'm really excited to get to this memoir. The second title I might read if I have time and inclination is um, Grace, which is the third novel by youngish Irish writer Paul Lynch. It was published in the United States in 2017. And it's a novel of the Great Irish Famine. And so for a few years I've sort of been thinking I would really like to read a novel about the Irish Famine because in the U.S. as someone of Irish descent, um, descended from people who basically left at that time, uh, I've sort of wondered about it. It's in the U.S. to just kind of hear like, well, you know, a lot of people's families came then, um, or you know what people happened, basically what happened when they came to the U.S., but what happened to the people who stayed, or what was happening before they were able to get out. There must be scads of Irish novels about the famine, but you just don't hear about them so much in the, in the U.S. Also, a little bit more likely I might be able to get to or a couple of story collections from a woman writer from Belfast. She has three books out, a novel and two story collections. Her most recent collection is called Postcard Stories, and they consist of postcards that she wrote in 2015. Once a week, she wrote to a friend or a relative, uh, like a little mini story. So I really like this idea. It kind of reminds me of Heidi Julevitz's The Folded Clock. And I think that they're fun because they sort of promise to yield like a picture of Belfast. Um, and since I read The Milkman probably by Anna Burns, I've sort of been thinking uh, I'd like to read more about Belfast, know a little, little bit more about the city. And she also has a story collection which came out before um, called Children's Children. And 
I really like the look of that. Um, I started reading this one called Still. I was not always a human statue. After college, I was briefly and unsuccessfully a postman, then a traffic warden, and finally a bus driver. By the age of 26, I had begun to find movement problematic. I liked to sit on benches and indoors on the sofa, not speaking, not even reading or watching television. I was quite well suited to buses, though the pleasure of being seated could not disguise the miles I moved every day, shoveling gun-faced commuters from one side of the city to the other. After a few months, the wheels began to overwhelm me. Karen said I was lazy, that I was nothing compared to the capable husbands of her friends and sisters, that she had not agreed to marry a slob. There were arguments around the kitchen table, some coiled, others as loose and loud as glass imploding. She signed me up for a six-month trial at the gym. I went once, and terrified by all those legs and arms pumping like fleshy pistons, never returned. I couldn't expect Karn to understand. It wasn't laziness which kept me seated, so much as a fear of overcomplicating things. There were so many necessary processes to concern myself with, thinking and breathing, heart beating, hair growing, and fretting over the various problems we'd accumulated, like warts and other crabby itches. I had no energy left for moving. So it just sounds like a fun voice. Um, and I'm always into a writer with a voice. Next section of the video, I'm going to talk about a couple of recommendations for things uh, by Irish writers I've read in recent. My next um, recommendation is also a story collection. It was the first book published by Danielle McLaughlin. It was published a couple of years ago. I reviewed it for a small paper in the U.S. I will try to remember to put in a link to that below. It's called Dinosaurs and Other Planets, and it is just superb. Um, I really don't think it has a clunker. It's just a near flawless collection. I highly recommend it to the short story resistant or anybody. And so we've got like a real estate bus going on and it, it kind of feels to me, I mean, maybe I don't know enough Irish writers, but it feels to me something like new, but McLaughlin's people are sort of like, they're more educated, they're more professional, um, and they are less free with their drinking and anger and frustrations. They're not on that writ large, um, almost caricaturist kind of fa stage at all. Um, it's an Ireland of sort of half-built housing estates, people living with dissonant lives, ex-urban, um, which is something I haven't seen before. Um, and there's a lot of sort of imagery of animals, just really striking imagery. Danielle McLaughlin publishes as her first book in her sort of, I guess, late 40s, because I think she just turned 50. She is an ex-lawyer who took up writing after she became too ill to work for a while. And just like, like last week, I think it was, that she won a huge prize given out by Yale University, which the name of which I forget. Um, something like something Wyndham Prize. Um, so she was really thrilled. I want to talk about Brian Dillon. He is an exceptionally precise writer. Um, he's got a book called Essayism, which is sort of, I mean, it's largely quite a hybrid. It's like a tour of um, subgenres of essay and um, essayists of the past who have influenced him in his thinking about the essay. But yet it is also really personal. Like, you sort of like um, get a glimpse into his family history, periods of depression, and how um, essays and essayists were important to him during those times. It's, it's a pretty brainiac book, so some people might be deterred by that, but it's also very personal. It is just ultimately a really beautiful book. And because it sort of like also connects to the personal in Brian Dillon's life, it sort of to me turns into like a book about being saved by literature, um, how the words on the page, in this case essays, and sort of like fill you up and demolish you and fill you up again. And I just was like immensely moved by this book and can't recommend it highly enough. Now I want to mention a few articles or stories, essays that are all by or in one case about Irish writers and just leave some quick descriptions and put in the links below so you can check them out. Okay, so if you're looking for some lesser known contemporary Irish writers, Literary Hub, the website, had a good roundup a couple of years ago, which lists 15 great Irish writers, quote, you've probably never heard of. Although you probably have heard of a few of them, especially by now, but most of them know, um, were basically new to me as well. 
Okay, now I'm going to re recommend sort of a pair of dark tales by an emerging Irish writer. In full disclosure, the, uh, the writer here, Neil Bristow, and I used to be in a writing group together, and he is freaking brilliant. Um, um, one of these stories, I think it's the first one, won um, the Irish Times Prize for Short Fiction. I think it was last year. It's called Waste Products, and it's about funerals and online hookups. I mean, you know, funerals, you got to have in an Irish story. Um, and his next one I'm going to recommend is called Honeycomb, which are which basically can be summarized as Tales of the Confession Booth, or Confessions of the Confession Booth. And the next one I recommend is um, a very short piece, flash fiction from Danielle McLaughlin. Also, a long-form personal essay by Sinead Gleason. She's got an, a long-form personal essay called Blue Hills and Chalk Bones which was published in Granta a couple years ago. Um, but I think you can get it. It's not behind the paywall. Uh, so about chronic illness and a weird, uh, weird Catholic rituals being hauled off to Lourdes for um, potential healing for her bone disease as a teenager. That's, this is an Irish writer who was um, on the list of the literary hub under so-called underknown, um, but enjoyed reading this one about Andy Warhol, it's fiction. If you are making time among all the BookTube March events, which isn't easy, there's so much going on with Mammoth, Middle Grade, and Mystery Madness, to fit in some Irish reads, check some of these out. And uh, if you have favorite Irish writers, especially sort of ones that have been flying under the radar, any new discoveries that you want to mention, let's talk Irish writers. So thanks for watching everybody and I will be back soon with a tag I hope and something for Women's History Month. Take care guys, see you later, bye!